I still have a business to run. This was the big weekend and the big Paul Bunyan weekend. And of course, we're going to take some time off to go visit. And on Thursday night, as a tradition, I have a cookout for the sponsors, the suppliers to my Firewood channel. So we had a lot of friends and family. And then the manufacturers, I invite my support crew, you know, the, the loggers, my helpers. I have a cookout for everyone. I think a lot of these guys, especially the manufacturers, they, they get bombarded with a lot of requests, but no one ever does anything for them. Well, I try to change that with Ohio Woodburner. We had a catered cookout for them. We had an international crowd here and it was fun. However, while all that's still going on, I have a business to run. <laughs> this has been a very interesting October. We have had we have not had that big blast of cold air yet. The weather's been quite nice, just kind of like, you know, last weekend. And normally with that big blast, your phone starts ringing off the hook. Well, <laughs> my phone's been ringing off the hook and we haven't had that big blast of cold, cold air yet. And what I have learned in firewood is that you cannot sell what you don't have. And now we're starting to feel the benefits of having this wood yard with all of the extra space where I can get my logs in, get them processed, get the wood stacked. And in fact, while I was away at Paul Bunyan, one of my loggers brought me in a load of logs. This is a half load. I've just gotten real aggressive with the logs. I still am not comfortable where we are. And if I can get them, and in this case, it was just a half load, it made sense for him. He didn't have to take them back to the yard to get a full load. So we just came up with a, a price that was good for both of us and these got delivered and I wasn't even here. My point though is the business still goes on. The phone keeps ringing. I had my, I always keep my ringer turned off anyways, but I was just getting bombarded with calls down there. On top of that, we have restaurants that are still wanting wood. For instance, this one here, this is a quarter of a cord of firewood. And again, it's not my ideal situation. I would rather have two separate quarter core deliveries. There's a couple things that's going on. It's just the way that this time of the season is. Uh, this guy didn't want to wait. He wanted it for this coming weekend or having a family outing. Uh, otherwise, this could have sat until another quarter got ordered from his general area and it would have been a much better business decision for me planning my deliveries. However, this is kind of a, a longer distance and this is my new truck and I just wanted to try it out, just make sure everything's working with it. It still runs nice, it shifts nice, it breaks nice and it looks nice. So my fingers are still crossed, but I did add the, uh, um, what do they call this thing? The load handler, I got that at Harbor Freight, but you can get them off Amazon. I have a link to it. Best money I've ever spent. This has just totally changed the way I deliver firewood. It's great for the customer. There's no mess. There's no, all the crumbs, everything stays in the truck. It doesn't get onto their driveway. My last video I did where I was showing this exact same situation, I think I was delivering a third of a cord, however. And then, you know, I started to get those comments again that I'm wasting my time, small deliveries. It is just 100% different the way I see things. Smaller quantities is how you deliver stuff. And there is that underlying attitude with firewood where people just don't want to spend a lot of time with it. And I just, oh, I just disagree with that because it is the inventory. It's the most important thing is you can't sell what you don't have. When I was in retail, the belief was the inventory <laughs> is sacred. And I'm talking, if you go into any of these, like a CVS or a Walgreens, you know, they'll have like little packets of um, super glue hanging on a hook. Guys, every single one of those packs is accounted for. The inventory is correct in the store and the, the retailers take care. They, they keep sacred their inventory. And I feel the same way with firewood. People are always just wanting to shortcut stuff. You know, they don't want to mess with small deliveries. They don't want to stack it. They just want a minimal touch. If you invest in your product, if you invest in your operation, you get it back. And that's what we're looking at here. The phone's been ringing off the hook, guys, but I have the second truck now and I'm still getting used to it. I still don't fully trust it 100%. It's going to take a while. But here, uh, I'm not hustling right now because I have a 
afternoon delivery, you know, where I would have to go, come back, reload. My other truck's already loaded up. We loaded it up last night and it's just sitting there waiting for its delivery. Once this delivery is done, I'm going to stop and get this refilled for tomorrow. And then the other truck in the evening, when it goes out, we will get it refilled. And we're doing multiple deliveries in a day. And the way I see it, guys, I could have, with two trucks, I could have four deliveries going out and have them all done by afternoon. And then when my high school help gets out of school, we can get these loaded up for tomorrow. Um, I don't know. <laughs> two trucks. I'd always thought that's just going to be four more flat tires and one more dead battery, but we'll give it a shot. Other comments that I had received from those previous videos with my deliveries was they would say, Joe, have you seen such and such hit their channel and look how they do it. I think that's a great idea. My belief is I'll do what I want to do. I think the firewood industry is probably the perfect example of an industry where you do not want to copy what everyone else is doing. I think you look for ways to be different, you look for ways to be exceptional, you look for ways to drive value to your customers. The one thing I've learned about firewood, it is easy to sell firewood and you will sell every single stick that you make. So why sell it cheap? Do the things that you can do to increase your price per cord and your business will become so much easier on you and your machinery and your trucks and uh, you'll have a lot of fun while you're doing it. But on this delivery, guys, we are going to be heading on to Poland, Ohio. And while we are up there with this delivery, we're gonna be running into a good friend, and I think many of you will already know who she is. She has made an appearance on the channel in past videos, and she's played a large role with Ohio Woodburner and with the possibility of the International Firewood Expo 2025. We are going to be meeting her um, after this delivery is done, and I hope I can just bring a quick video and she can give us an update on everything that's going on. All right, guys, so let's load up. Hold on. <laughs> so let's load up the new truck and let's head on to Poland, Ohio. Here we go. And here we are. You may recognize Melissa Negi. She is the owner operator of Pico yes. Designs. Correct. Yeah, you have been, well, I came up with a nickname for you, the first lady of firewood, because <laughs> nice. you started with me, uh, with the firewood industry, and we kind of hit it off, and I love the logo that you made for me, and we put your, lo we put your information on my videos, mm -hmm. and what do you know, over the years, how many firewood companies, just the firewood companies, have you done off of uh, Ohio wood burner videos a lot. I, I think last year I quoted between 50 and 60 So yeah. I'm probably up to about 80 now she <laughs> was. It just keeps growing and that's one of the powers of the internet Because you are not just dealing with firewood companies in the Mahoning Valley That's true you have and you've worked with companies outside of the country too. correct I've got a client up in Canada now. worldwide. How about that? <laughs> Yeah, so um, what do you see anything common with the firewood companies or are the, or I would imagine a lot of them are just, this is their first experience branding and personalizing their, their logos. Yes, for many of you, it is your first experience with your logos and we start off either with a label or the logo or a combination of the two and I've watched it grow from there. Um, many of you come back for additional projects to work on, even websites. Um, you even have multiple businesses. So. Yeah. You, you had said there are people that aren't just firewood, but they have other stuff and they've, Correct. you've done the same work yeah. for them. I, I've found people that actually watch your firewood channel, but reach out to me for a different leg of business that they have. That's oh, their wow. hobby. That's real good to know. And they, I'm also re remembering here, we're standing in front of a blank slate, my new truck. And I recall, um, when I first, when you made my logo, I had it, I had my old truck lettered. And I brought it up here and showed you, and it just it hit me on how excited you were to see it because that was the first of one of your designs that made it onto the side of a truck. Exciting seeing it on something larger like a vehicle or the billboards or signs. It's it's fun seeing it on large print, not just digital. Yeah. Okay. So I was at the Paul Bunyan this weekend, and I had a, a nice line of people that come out to see me at the Metza Machines Yappa tent, and there was a gentleman who you had just did 
his logo for his firewood company. He was from West Virginia, and he asked if I could run these shirts up here. They obviously aren't going to fit me, but these are the shirts that he had made with the logo that you made for him. Yeah. Yeah. And that looks nice. I like I think it the uh, great. Yeah, I like the 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 state is in it. It, it mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a nice logo. It looks great. Location and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so here you are. Your logo isn't a logo just isn't something that goes on a website. You know, you got what are the things like business cards and Correct. From your labels that normally starts it, but then we have the business cards, the flyers, the t-shirts, the graphics. Um, I had another client Sting Gray who just wrapped his truck and yeah so I, it, it goes everywhere <laughs> i saw that logo and that is that nice looks sharp, that looks it? tough yeah yes. it makes me wish i had a more <laughs> sinister aggressive looking uh logo we yeah can always revamp work on it. <laughs> and if you guys weren't aware of this we have this little project upcoming called the international firewood expo <laughs> firewood expo and Melissa has helped me with the flyers because at Paul Bunyan I was talking with people and seeing if they would be interested in coming. And these look awesome. But Melissa did the layout and the and she's done the website and it just looks great. And it was nice to be able to put something in the customer's hand because it just sends the message that you know this isn't a Mickey Mouse operation. <laughs> that is that is uh, professional and that we're taking it serious. So that looks awesome too and she's also putting up with me <laughs> with the website because we bought the domain and uh, Melissa is partnering with me to get this up and running so um, the website I guess it's it's active right now but a lot Work of people don't know about it but maybe <laughs> if you get a chance check it out and there will be more updates to it coming because mm -hmm. every time I tell her this is the final edit <laughs> I text her again. And I was like, oh, do you think we can add a... <laughs> well, I'm sure before spring, we'll have many more edits. Yeah. <laughs> Lots more information coming. Yeah. And guys, if you are serious about turning your side hustle into a career or just into a business, the first step, well, the first step is get it started. But the second step is get yourself professionalized with yep. a logo, with literature, your business cards, and your logo is important. It tells the world who you are and what you're all about. And then you need someone like Melissa, <laughs> First Lady of Firewood here to help you out. You have a special Ohio wood burner hidden page to your website. It is only for you guys and gals interested in her services with logos and professionalizing your brand. And if you use the link for Ohio wood burner, uh, you get, uh, what do you charge them, double or? <laughs> <laughs> now you'll receive a discount from special pricing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> special Depending pricing. Depending on your package that you're looking for. Okay. So we're going to put that in the description also. And um, if anyone wants to get a hold of you, mm -hmm. send you an email and you'd love to talk to them. Exactly. Yep. All right. That's and available. then maybe next time I see you, we'll have this blank slate all lettered up. Huh? Can't wait to see it. Yeah, really. <laughs> all right, guys. Melissa, thank you. Yep, and thank uh, you. I got to head on down the road. I got another delivery. All right. Okay. Have, a, have a great day. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs>
All right, guys, so we are loaded up. We are going to the delivery, and I just wanted to thank everyone for coming along on this ride. If this video is a little choppy, it's because that's the way my day went. I've been four days out of the loop, and now I'm chasing my tail getting everything back uh, on, on schedule for deliveries. All right, guys, I hope everyone has a great day.